Good morning, this is Cindy and welcome to my channel. Before I begin today, I do want to say, a sh I give a great big shout out to all of my subscribers. There are 93 of you as of this point, and so that means seven more to go before I give away a journal. I will put a link down in the description box to the journals that I'm giving away. There are three that you will have a choice from, and I will be picking one lucky winner once I reach 100 subscribers. And we are so, so close. I'm very excited about this. Okay, so today I'm doing a different kind of project. Um, this is not a project to go in my journals, but to help me organize my stuff for my journals. And I'm going to start with this. So this is a piece that a friend of mine made, Jacinta Ivers, made this for me. And it's a folder that opens up and it's an accordion folder made out of envelopes. Isn't this wonderful? And so obviously I have filled it up with stuff. And I thought, well, you know, I could reverse engineer that. I could figure out how to make one of those. Sure. So I made one of my own. Now this one, figure out which end here opens up. There we go. Um, this is the one that I made, and I made a mistake when I did it. You can see that mine does not accordion quite as well. Because when you glue, you only glue the middle part. And for some reason, I don't know where my head was, I did the whole thing. So it does not open as well, but it's got some pieces. And I thought today I would make another one on camera because I have so much ephemera. And I'm going to make a Christmas one because I have a lot of Christmas ephemera. So I thought I'm going to make one of these that is specifically for all of my Christmas stuff. So... What you will need, if you choose to craft along with me, you're going to need some sort of an outside. Now for this one, I just used a manila folder. This time I'm using a Pendaflex folder. And the reason I'm using this, um, I went to the craft store or the thrift store and I bought a whole box of these for like a dollar, I think. And there are probably 24 or so of these folders in there for a dollar. And uh, I have, yes, I do have a Pendaflex hanging file cabinet, but I have so many folders. I thought, you know, I'm pretty sure I could just use one of these for uh, my craft. So you could use a regular manila folder. The thing is, whatever you use, it needs to be pretty stiff. Um, I'm not sure what she used. It looks like it might be, have been just, um, it, it was two-sided, whatever it was. It probably was a piece of um, cardstock, but it's a really heavy cardstock that I don't have access to. So I used this and then I stenciled a little bit just to give it a little decoration. So you're going to need a Pendaflex folder. You are going to need envelopes, eight of them. So I have eight junk envelopes here and I don't care about the color because you know, nobody's going to, it's me. I, this is for me. I'm using it and it doesn't really matter to me what colors I have. I'll probably put there. We'll do that. Um, what I also have, and I'm just going to talk about them real quick. I have window envelopes. I have so many of these window envelopes, but I don't want to use, and you absolutely could use them in here. I'm not going to, because I like to save the window envelope for a journal and then I can put, you know, I usually cut them in half and then I put something in here and I decorate it and whatnot. And then I use the other half as a pocket. So I'm not using that particular type. I'm also not using a regular envelope. This wasn't just a plain old um, legal size envelope that this kind of thing goes into. But you can see it's so much bigger than the rest. And so it would stick out the end. So I have eight envelopes. I have a Pentaflex folder. I have eight envelopes. I have my glue and I'm going to be using Fabri-Tac for this. You probably, I know a lot of you really enjoy your glue sticks, but my concern is with all the opening and the closing that you're going to end up doing a lot of repair all the time on that. So I'm not going to use, I want to use something that is going to stick and I don't have to do too much trouble with. I also have these this is my corner rounder. 
because I liked the rounded edges on that one side. So I have my corner rounder and I have my hole punch because you need to make a thingamabob. And we'll talk about what's on there in a minute once we get to that point. So we've got all of that. I also have my baker's twine, which very nicely matches this particular Pendaflex. So that's kind of an added bonus, unexpected, but added. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set those aside for set that aside for a minute. And the first thing I have to do is take off all of my uh, flaps because I don't want them. I need that to be open. So I'm just going to take a minute, use my little handy dandy cutter and take all of those off. Do I keep those? You betcha. I'll find a different use for those later. Now, you don't need to sit, sit here and watch me do this. So I am going to go ahead and pause my video, take off all my tops here, and then I will be right back. Okay, so I am back now with my envelopes all done, and now it's time to figure out the cover. Um, and for this, I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use one of these as my guide. And I'm going to put this down here because I want to use just a little bit down at the bottom. I need this, if you notice, you know, you take up a little bit of space down there. You're, you're not a lot of space, but you take up some. So I'm going to leave just a little bit of space for that. And I'm going to put my mark with my pencil where I want to cut that. Bring my piece up. I do need to change my blade. I don't have a decent blade and I have to go to the store and buy a new blade. So we will get that done, but not today. So I'm just doing the front now piece of this. Come on, get up where I need you to be. There we go. I'll just organize it just a little bit more. Right there. Okay, I'm keeping this because, like I said, I'm going to be doing some other, I want to do some other stuff with it. So, and you'll see what happens with that in a minute. Let me move that out of the way. So now I have the beginning part of my folder. And what I'm going to do, just because it's going to be clunky, is I'm going to take off this part, but I'm not trimming it down completely to this yet. Or do I want to? Am I ready? Okay, it looks like if I just take this piece off, it's going to be perfect. So let me go ahead and get that through there. This is probably easier to do if I take the metal piece out. Yeah, let me t let me do that real quick. I'm just going to run my finger underneath there and get that metal bar out because I want to get this a little bit closer. I'd rather cut it too big and then have to cut it down than cut it too small and be ticked off that I've wasted a whole folder. So let me come to here. And now, of course, I need to do the width. And I'm not measuring. I'm not, you know me, I'm not really much of a measurer. I would much rather just do it this way. I'll do it on the inside so my mark doesn't show. Okay, let's do it up here. Um, right there. Now, some people do make these a little bit bigger than what they have than what they're starting with, but uh, I'm okay with this. I think we're going to go with the exact same size. Okay, so there's my folder. When I fold this over, I want to make sure I leave myself some room Okay, showing you, and you got to leave a little room. Not a lot. So let me throw my 
piece in there. You don't need a lot of room. And I'm going to fold that just lightly. I am not doing a heavy crease. That's just a little crease at this point. All right. So now we've got to start putting it together. And I'm going to start by gluing this piece. <coughs> Sorry. Right down to that piece. So I want to make sure, and this one, the whole back end of it is going to get glued. This is envelope number one. And the whole thing gets glued right down to your piece. I'm leaving just a tiny bit of space. Not even a, maybe, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. No, not even a thirty-second of an inch right there. Okay, now I'm going to take my next envelope and I'm going to, again, oh shoot, that has, hmm, hang on. I got to look at my envelopes here. Yeah, they all need to be. Yep, same thing. See how this divots? That means it's not going to work. So let me see how many of those I have that divot. Oh, too many of them. That one will probably still be okay. That one divots. That one will be okay, and that one will be okay. But that one divots, and that one divots. I'm going to pause, grab some more of these. Believe me, I have plenty. Okay, after taking another look, I realized that actually I can use these. So full stop. And, oh my glory, I need to change that blade. That's useless almost. Okay. So we're going to take this now, and now we're going to glue this one to this one. Let me get rid of all those extra little pieces. All right. So in order to do that, double checking, because I want to make sure I glue it correctly. Yep, it's just the top. So I'm going to glue, put my glue here, and only about so far, because I want it to be able to open. And then I'm going to glue that right to it. Move you out of the way. So now, see how it starts to open? And I did get, how did I get glue over there? You know, sometimes you got to wonder what the heck you're doing. Okay. So I got a little bit of glue in there. That's all right. We're good. Okay, now we're going to do it again. We're going to glue down here. Come on. And we're going to take this. Hang on. I'm not pleased with the way I organized that one. You know, some days are golden and some days are not. Today it's more like work. But that's okay. Because the temperature here in the Finger Lakes is going up into the 70s. It's supposed to end up being about 76 and I am very excited about that because after tonight the temperatures plummet and so it's it's Friday here when I'm actually doing the filming for this and I am actually quite excited about the warmer weather I am a warm weather person um I have always, I remember as a kid going to visit my grandparents in Florida. They had, they moved, when they retired, they ended up moving to Florida. Um, not so much by choice that they had to give up their house. Um, my grandparents lived on Gertrude Street, a street that no longer exists in Rochester, New York, because the bus barns, which were behind, or actually at the end of their street, 
the bus company wanted to expand, and so they bought up all the houses on Gertrude Street. They also bought up all of Homedale Place and half of Federal Street. I'm not sure if there was another street in there that they bought up as well. Anyway, they bought up all of those houses and tore them all down, tore the streets out. They were all dead-end streets. They're all gone. And so my grandparents had to sell their house to the bus company. And then they moved. And they ended up down in Florida. See how I'm doing this? This is easy. I'm just stacking them. At this point, I am just stacking them. We'll double check. And I'm, you know, going a lot on faith here, hoping that this is actually going to work. It should. This is how I made it the last time. So I used to visit my grandparents every once in a while in Florida. And as a, I was a teenager by that point. And to be honest, I did not, as a teenager, I hated Florida. It was too hot. It was buggy. They had lizards. I just did not like Florida. Um, see how this is working? It works. It's going to be just fine. As an adult, I still am not so sure that I want to move to Florida. My, grand, my parents ended up getting a condo in Florida for a while, and they wintered in Florida for a number of years until my dad started getting kind of sick and then he needed dialysis and it was just easier to not go down. They ended up selling their condo and staying up here for the winters. But as an adult now looking at all of that, I'm not sure that I still want to move to Florida only because um, it's still really hot. In fact, it's getting hotter. I think I if I stay here in upstate New York, I maybe end up just fine. Okay, that's a little bit long. I'm going to want to cut that down a little bit. But look at, see how easy that was? Incredibly easy to put these together and make a little ephemera folder. So let me take a little bit of, I'm going to close up my glue because if I don't, it'll bubble up and then I'll have a mess. So after a rather rocky start, we did in fact get going here and we did end up with something all right now I just want to take a little bit of off not a lot off just a little bit because I don't want it to hang down quite so far okay so I'm going to take it just that little strip off there we go I'm going to corner round it and do it like this come on get in there Just because I like the look. You don't have to put a corner around it and you can do whatever size corner round that you want. I just happen to like this look and that's the corner rounder that I have. Now I need my closure and for my closure that's where I want my it is a one and a half inch. Um, I'm using a one and a half inch because it's the only size I have. So let me get my circle out. And my circle can go right there. Now I can, I would like a contrast. I mean, it would be nice to have a contrast. I don't have another color, so we'll go with that. And then I need something to go on top of that. So I have shells. Speaking of Florida, because my parents lived, my actually my aunt and uncle lived not too far from Sanibel, I used to go over to Sanibel all the time, and my mom loved picking up the shells. And so she ended up with tons of them, and these I always thought were the best ones in the lot. So I'm not going to use anything that's too 3D. I love these, but I'm not going to use those big ones. They're just too big, too, too bulky for this. Um, some absolutely gorgeous pieces here, but... We're not going to use all of those. Okay, what I do have is a lot of this, uh, I always call it abalone. I don't know what it really is. Please, if you know what this is, uh, leave it in the mother, because it, it's kind of like a mother of pearl. That one might be too, 
I'm looking, I'm, I'm sorting them out, trying to find the ones that are too 3D because I don't want something that's too much of a 3D piece because these get stored. Sorry, hang on, my flop that was back over. They get stored like this. And so I don't want them too bulky, but I want them, I don't mind a little bit of bulk. So that one's kind of small. That one's too bulky, but that one's pretty. I like that one better. That's too small. That's too small. That's too bulky. Nope, we're sticking with that one. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so I've got it down to two. Let me put my jar of shells away. Um, and Jacinta used just a little piece, you know, one of those half pieces of, it's plastic, it looks like glass, but it's, um, she just used a really piece of uh, uh, the heavy card stock that she used for here is underneath there. And then um, just a, a bubble, basically. And I used a shell on my other one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and use, do I like that shell? Do I like that shell? I think I like this shell. It's a little bit big, but that's okay. All right. So my, I'll put my shells away. And what's nice about this is that every time I look at it, I think of my mom, and that's not a bad thing. I miss her. She died in 2019. She never had to go through um, COVID. My dad did, but my, my mom didn't. And this will help me think of her. Okay, we're going to let that sit and chill for a little bit. Um, now, to attach it in here, I want to build it up some. So what I'm going to do is I have, I also have a three quarter inch, um, whatever you call this thing. Do I, is that going to be big enough? Yeah, that'll do. Because you're not going to see this part. So I'm just going to make a bunch of these little circles. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open that up because it doesn't really matter to me if it's, um, I just want to make sure I line it up. <coughs> Sorry. Here, you know what? Let's do it this way. It's going to spit at me. You ready? Whee! Okay, stop. Where'd it go? There it is. On my, on my shirt. Uh, because what I need to do is build up a shank. Shank? Shank. I need to build up a shank. Dropping out all my extra pieces here. So if you live in Florida, tell me how you survive the heat. I know, air conditioning. But is there... Uh, another way of doing it so you don't have to be in the AC all the time. I'm making all of them because what the heck, why not? We'll just use them all up. Okay. There we go. Now, I know I could keep these and they would probably make something really cool, but I don't know that I want to bother with that. You know, after a while, you kind of have to make your own decisions about how much you really want to do. I kind of fuzz everywhere on this. I don't know where it's coming from. It's like glitter. Where am I getting glitter? I haven't used, you know what it is? I know what it is. I had a Christmas card out here not too long ago, and I'm pretty sure there was glitter on the Christmas card. Okay, so we're just going to pile these up and make a nice, oops, thick shank for our button. Now, could you use a button on this? Absolutely. There are so many ways that you can individualize this and make it your own. You know, I could, instead of putting a shell on there, I could have put a button on there. Um, or I could just attach a button probably directly to it and not do a circle. I just like the circle because I think it's pretty. 
Um, because these got cut, I'm making sure I put all the flat on the same side because um, I get anal that way. I don't have to, I just want to. I don't know if I need to use all of these either. This one might be my last one. Okay, that's plenty, I think. Let's see. Pull my string out here. Now oh, maybe one more. Tell you one thing, I ain't got glue everywhere. Yeah, I think that's gonna be plenty. Okay, so I have, that leaves me with two. Yeah, what the heck, we'll keep going. All right. Make sure that's in the center. I'm going to let that sit and dry for a while, just a little bit. I do need to clean that off because I did get a little bit of a bubble. I love how Fabri-Tac uses, works, but the physics of the bottle sometimes drive me crazy. And I have another big bottle that I can pour it into, but I haven't tried that yet. Um, I'll get there. Okay, so I have... Two little ones left over. I'll just set those aside. Those will go into the circle bin, circle box. I can get rid of that. I don't need that. Okay. So that's going to go on there like so. No, I just put my glue. Why'd you put your glue away? You need your glue. You're forgetting what you're doing here. Okay. Now I want to make sure that I get it in the right spot. So we're going to put the glue on here and then put the glue right there. And now we're going to walk away and we're going to leave it sit. Let it sit. And while it sits, we can cut our Baker's twine. This is from uh, the Dollar Tree. I do not really need much here. I'm going to let that go up there for a minute while I figure out how much Baker's twine I need. And so that's, let's see. I want to come to, I know, I should just probably get out something and measure it. I'll tell you what, I'll measure it when I'm done and I'll let you know how much I used. There's one. And then I want double that plus a little bit more so that if I've made a mistake, I can always chop it off. That's my theory is always cut large and then make it smaller if you need it. Okay, so how long is this? This is, okay, that's 24 to there. About 32 inches. I made that about 32 inches in size. And I'm just going to, I'm going to hook it around here if I think that that's dry enough yet. Is it dry? No, it's not moving. Okay, I'm going to hook that around my shank. And then I'm going to tie a square knot. So right over left and under. Thank you, Girl Scouts. Left over right and under. Okay. And I'm going to, I think I might <clears throat> leave my, leave a little bit of space on here. I'm going to just tie those together. Nope, way too much. Pull that out. I'm going to move my knot down. 
obviously this is not an exact science. Maybe for some people it is, but I'm just not that, I'm not so good at that, making things an exact science. And the reason I'm going to leave it a little, I'm going to leave it a little loose, and I'm going to leave my ends at least for a little while, because I need to fill it. And when I fill it, it's going to get fatter. And when it gets fatter, ta-da! Look at that. I now have a brand new ephemera holder. I can unhook it, open it up, and I can start filling it with all sorts of Christmas ephemera. What have I got? I've got little pieces here. I've got pieces of paper. I've got envelopes. I have some embossed stuff. I can just fill it up with all sorts of pieces. There's a framework. There's another framework right there. I can put my frames in there. This is going to be fun. I am going to have fun. There's another pocket. I've got all sorts of stuff. See, this is how I generally organize stuff. There's another pocket. Um, is that I have everything in a great big bin. And then because everything's in a big bin, it doesn't always get used because there's a little snowman. It doesn't always get used because I forget to go through it or I go through it and I miss stuff. See, there's a whole bunch of stuff here at the back. We're just gonna put that in there. This is also probably a good place. I should probably do this for my stickers. I might do that too. I have all of these stickers, Christmas stickers, that are um, in an envelope, and it'd be nice to put them in here, and I can arrange them whatever way I want. So there you go. That's an easy-to-make ephemera holder. Um, like I said, I've made my piece a little bit big at this point, and that's okay. I can trim it down, but I'm going to keep it skinny for or fat for now until I fill it up, because once I fill it, I'm going to want that space. All right, if you have not yet subscribed, please make sure you do so. If you liked this video, hit that little like button down below. And when I reach 100 subscribers, I will be giving away that journal. Make sure you check out that link below. Check out my Etsy shop. I do have journals for sale. And, uh, or my coffee shop. I have uh, journals, for some of my journals I put over there as well. All right, in the meantime, go out and enjoy the good weather. And this is Cindy signing off.